Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for granting me leave to make a brief intervention on this very important resolution. Mr. Speaker, I wish to support in very clear and categorical terms the resolution put forward to this Honorable House by the Honorable Minister for Finance to borrow an amount of US $1,203,224 from the CARICOM Development Fund to finance the Passios Water Supply Community Project. This loan, Mr. Speaker, is highly concessional. It is to be repaid over 10 years, commencing from the first date after a grace period of two years, following the date of the first disbursement. The loan is to be repaid. disburse and outstanding. This is commendable, Mr. Speaker, given the fact that inflation has driven up interest rates in the global environment that we're in today. And it signals with clarity that there is prudent management of the finances of this country. Mr. Speaker, the government of the St. Lucia Labour Party, headed by the Honorable Philip Joseph Pierre, the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, is busy delivering to the people of St. Lucia, while the opposition is busy trying their best to destabilize our economy by organizing strikes and using Cambridge Analytica techniques to again try to befog the sound common sense of the people of this country. Mr. Speaker, while they speak and make noise, we are working. Instead of debating the major policy issues of the day, they are spending their time uselessly. I guess they have a lot of time on their hands, Mr. Speaker, attempting to defend the failed policies which the electorate rejected in the most emphatic fashion at the last general elections in July 26, 2021. They are now attempting their best to gaslight the electorate, trying to convince them that they did the wrong thing by booting them out of office. The same cast of characters, Mr. Speaker, who were overwhelmingly rejected by the electorate are again attempting once more to engage in subterfuge, Mr. Speaker. It is indeed a sad state of affairs, Mr. Speaker, as we have an opposition that has failed to engage in debate on the serious policy issues of the day. And Mr. Speaker, it appears as I get into the cauldron of this debate, that the leader of the opposition is still called the Prime Minister by his supporters, fueling him, I think he's suffering from something they call chagrin pouvoir, honorable member, along with the others who are attempting to foment unrest at a time when the government of the St. Lucia Labour Party is delivering on the pressing but legitimate needs of the people of this country. Mr. Speaker, this resolution to borrow for the Passions Community Water Supply Project is indeed a most worthy initiative and should have really been addressed by the last administration. And as my colleagues indicated, I mean, you, you just look into memory's eye. This is a constituency that supported the UWP, contributed significantly to banana production in this country, and how much of the monies went into their own development. You go around the constituency, the huge buildings you see, the homes, were built by blood, sweat, and tears. They built it because bananas were green gold prior to WTO. And that was their own efforts. Even those who did not make it to a secondary school and ended their, their, their school life in Standard 4, they had the FAR and they were able to go to Viewfort and make a demand for goods and services all over the island. They were able to do that. But how much of their blood, sweat, and tears went into the development of the constituency? Instead of squandering Wasco's money to build an administrative center in Viewfort, 
and making a mess with the project to desill the John Compton Dam. They should have instead focused on the core needs of the people. Mrs. Mr. Speaker, when millions of dollars were spent preparing a foundation for the erection of an administrative building, and you take a little twizin, a little shack, and come and put it on that foundation, just to block the opportunity to proceed with the erection of a very important administrative building that would ensure that people can get services in the South that they do not necessarily have to come to the North, where there is an overbalance of population, to get basic services, Mr. Speaker. I need to emphasize, Mr. Speaker, that we need to desill the John Compton Dam, but this last administration took project management to another level that has never seen before in this country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, they are not concerned with the needs of the people, and they were concerned with spending money lavishly and wastefully to satisfy the FFFs. And I heard the member for Chouzel, Saltibus, talking about, oh, they spent $2 million over there to bring water along the Grosile Highway, and those things may be not sexy enough to bring votes, but we should do them all over the island. But Mr. Speaker, this is exactly what we were saying. When they spend $20 million on incinerators, we're saying spend it on water, or spend it on the needs of the people of this country. When they took the $8 million to relocate Bosejou at Volet, that's what we're saying, take it instead and invest it in the people's business. Instead of building a road for $13.6 million to accommodate DSH, take it and improve the water supply. This is what the Labour Party in essence was saying. Mr. Speaker, our government firmly believes in achieving the sustainable development goals. And in this regard, in achieving SDG 6, Mr. Speaker, the United Nations has determined that clean water and sanitation is a fundamental human right. I am sure that all members in this honorable house would agree with this, Mr. Speaker. This SDG is about clean water and sanitation for all. According to the United Nations, the goal is to ensure availability and sustainable management of water for all. There are six outcome targets to this goal, and I wish to mention three of them in relation to the PASIAS Water Supply Community Project. These are providing safe and affordable drinking water, improve water quality, and ensure fresh water supplies. Mr. Speaker, I will now turn my attention to the project, namely the PASIAS Community Water Supply Project. The PASIAS water, water System, Mr. Speaker, has been a small intake located at Piton. Water flows from this small intake by gravity up to a supply storage facility in Lomba, where it, it gets disinfected. I repeat, Mr. Speaker, where it gets disinfected and subsequently distributed to approximately 10 homes. And you heard me, Mr. Speaker, at least 10 homes. And it, and it involves St. Marie, Patience, Lomba, Laho, Monripo, Wen Development, Mamikou, Poilin, La Pointe, Magwetut, and the member for Mikunov. I said it goes all the way to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it is important to note that there are at least 1,729 people in these communities. I mentioned that are served by the Passius water system. You would have thought that Passius, being in the constituency of Mikunov, and I would say a former stronghold former. of the United Workers Party, former. would have received priority attention. I say former deliberately, former. because there is no turning back <coughs> with the honorable member for, for Mikunov. But no, Mr. Speaker, the UWP neglected these people and was clearly expecting that the people from Mikunov would continue to vote for them despite ignoring one of the most basic needs. Now, I'll tell you the difference between the Labour Party 
and the United Workers Party. Even though Mikunov did not vote for us, even in 1997, when there was 16 one, we built a police station there. We built a fire station there. We attended to Jabatis Hill. The primary school at Miku. And I can go on and on, on and on, to say to you, what the UWP, I don't take instructions from you, honorable member. I, I control my time in this honorable house, and I say what I want to say, honorable member. So let, let me proceed and resume normal navigation. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it is important to note that if the member was concerned, and he says he's a UWP, but UWP is no more. The, pri the party is privatized now, so that is his party, and he's doing whatever he wants. It's privatized. Now, Mr. Speaker, if they were concerned about Mikunov, they would have attended to the pressing but legitimate needs of the people. And they cannot compare Mikunov with Labry. Labry was dismembered from Viewfort in 1974. 30 of those years since then have been occupied by them. And what has been their contribution? So if they could neglect their own, I can well understand what they have done to the constituency of Labri Oje. And you take your journey through the corridors of the time, you take your journey through the corridors of time, you'll realize that the Labri Health Center, the Labri Administrative Building, the Library Community Center, Vellon John Administrative Building, the jetty, you go all around on the roads, the playing field at Olibo, the roads that were built, all under a St. Lucia Labour Party administration. You know what the contribution was in 1992? In 87, when Mr. Neville Snack crossed the floor in this honorable house, spent five years with the UWP government. In 1992, on the eve of an election, they planted poles. They said they bring electricity to Lao and Bewanji. And they put a lot of pipes there. They won the, the, the elections of 1992. And you know what they did? They uprooted every pole. <laughs> All the pipes that were on the ground, they took them away and deprived the people. But when the star of freedom rose in 1997, God bless the people of the Labri Oje constituency. And of course, they said, let there be light at Laho. And there was light. And water, which is life, reached Bewaje, the Labri bypass. Can you imagine the Labri bypass was deprived, removed the poles, and were able to electrify our areas, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and I recall whilst talking about electricity, Bouton, the UWP said, it is better to relocate everybody from Bouton than to bring electricity there. But again, when the star of freedom rose in 1997, electricity with the member for VFO South as Prime Minister and the Honorable Fasua, they brought electricity down to Bhutan. As a matter of fact, I have said before in this honorable house, a friend of mine who told me he was at Bhutan, and he told me that when they brought the electricity to Bhutan, the chickens at Bhutan didn't even recognize it was night time, that they made Juve believing that it was still daylight. And it was the day of celebration for them. <laughs> At the last general elections, Mr. Speaker, the people said enough is enough and voted for the honorable member who sits in the House today, Mr. Speaker, as the member for Mikunov. Very serious, very sober representative. And he's pursuing, he's pursuing the development of Mikunov, addressing the defects via patient endeavor. And he has the support of the cabinet, and he has the support of the Minister for Finance and Prime Minister of the country. 
Mr. Speaker, he won a ransom majority, an expression of the confidence placed in the honorable member. This confidence has been repaid in the form of the Passions Community Water Supply Project being debated in this house today, among many other things. Mr. Speaker, according to Wasco, this water supply is one of the worst supplied areas and is definitely in need of a more reliable raw water supply. And of course, to ensure that it is treated to improve the water quality. Mr. Speaker, this system is extremely vulnerable to overland pollution emanating from surface runoffs when it rains. Because of the index remoteness, Mr. Speaker, when it rains, the operators would be unaware. And it's only after customers begin complaining would they realize that it has rained. The water supply system would have to be flushed and disinfected before better quality water is released back into the network. That's one. Consequently, this results in water supply downtime. This can happen anytime, Mr. Speaker, and is especially worse when it happens during the night. Conversely, during the dry season, when water raw quality would be better, the volume becomes too low to supply the entire community, thus subjecting customers and residents to water rationing and trucking. This can be a very costly exercise for Wasco, and more importantly, a major inconvenience for residents in Passios and the other areas, including Vietnam. These are people who have to go to work, Mr. Speaker, send their children to school, and they expect to receive water to carry out their household chores. Wasco has identified a new area on the Pito River, but because of its low elevation, Mr. Speaker, a pumping setup system has to be installed. A multi-prong project approach has been developed by Wasco to solve this major water problem affecting many communities, including the Passios community. It is anticipated that on completion of this project, the Passios community will have a more reliable and safer water supply, which meets the needs of its residents. There is only one thing left to do, Mr. Speaker, for the Honorable Member for Labri Oje to give full support to the resolution for borrowing U.S. $1 million $203,224 from the CARICOM Development Fund to finance the Passios Water Supply Community Project under the terms and conditions detailed in the resolution. Mr. Speaker, long live the people of Mikunov, long live the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, long live the St. Lucia Labour Party. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.